Good morning, good morning, good morning everyone from Dr. Deborah Williams, aka Dr. Debs. Welcome back to my educational kitchen. Friends, family, clients, patients, I have been loving your responses to these videos. I had no idea that these little home videos would have had such a great impact on your progress. But the feedback I've been getting has been tremendous. I have clients calling me, telling me that they are doing better in their kitchen now and organizing their program since the videos have been coming out. I have friends and family members saying, thank you, Debs. It is helping me so much now to structure what I'm doing. I had a wonderful client, Joy, who made a whole spread of the flatbreads and the sweet bread and the and the macaroons she made a whole entire spread and went and shared it with her staff and her friends i was so impressed oh god is so good truly when we surrender our hearts in love and kindness to others god multiplies blessing to us now this morning i want to share a, a kind of video that's going to be a little deeper than i normally would go i'm looking at some comments and some questions and i want to kind of just address them all other questions all right so let's see question number one dr debs your head wraps <laughs> you know you guys are not ordinary even my head wraps people are asking me all right so let's answer the question about the head wraps i only wrap my head because of these videos okay so if i was to comb my hair for for, for, for taping you would never get one video because i don't have time for that because I don't have, my hair is just one of them stubborn uh, hair. To, I just, I'm not a hair person, right? So when I started doing the videos, I used to just tie it with the handkerchief for exercise. And then now I'm doing other videos outside of exercise time. And that's what they've not time to fix up no fancy hair. So that's what happened now. I started rocking. And the more I wrapped is the more I like the wraps. And the more my staff and friends like the wraps. So I went and got some more. And I learned so it's quick and easy presentable to the audience and that is the only reason why dr. Debs wear her wrap so I'm glad you guys are liking my wraps I said the feedback um, yeah I like them too I'm really really liking them uh, it's very nice and regal and um, one of my staff um, Kahija said boy not you look like an African queen <laughs> I am a queen for Jesus all right question number two the issue of um, my, some of my friends and clients saying that they are trying to go whole food and they're watching videos online, but some of what they're seeing is kind of contradicting some of what I teach. For example, I teach no soy sauce, right? I teach no vinegar. I teach no nutritional yeast. I don't use those things in my, in my cooking for health concerns. I teach no baking soda, no baking flour. Now, where did I get all that from? Okay. Now, remember, you got to remember, remember something, guys. Dr. Debs is a Seventh-day Adventist medical missionary who has been trained through the Bible by the power of the Holy Spirit and through what we call the Spirit of Prophecy writings by Helen G. White. So, you always hear me quoting from... Um, Sister White, right? She died in 1915. Okay. Now God called her when at the age of 17 and gave her many messages and many visions, and her writings are documented, and they help us and guide us as we focus on Jesus, right? She was a messenger of Christ. So I use her writings a lot to guide me because God gave her the instructions. Now, in 1863, as far back as 1863. God gave the Seventh-day Adventist Church something that we call health reform. Health reform is instructions and guidelines by God in terms of how we are to eat to maintain the body. We call it whole food plant-based. So we're not vegans, we're not even vegetarians. We are health reformers. So way back in 2012 when I was diagnosed with breast cancer, I went back to the source. I went back to the Lord. If you all remember the previous videos and I asked the Lord what he wanted me to do, right? Remember the book was ministry of healing. I was directed to. So this book is my key book in terms of teaching me 
how I should eat. Now the whole idea behind whole food plant based diet is to keep it simple, right? We just try and keep it simple. We use our herbs, right? We use our fruits, vegetables, seeds, nuts, grains, grown provision, um, our lentils, right? Lots of peas and beans, lots of water. And we now organize simple, delicious, healthy dishes. So you may hear me say the word vegan sometime. I only use that word because you understand what I mean. <laughs> That's the only reason why I use it. I'm not a vegan. But when I say vegan, you immediately understand no animal product. You understand? That is why. So I'm not a vegan. I'm not even a vegetarian. Because I have lots of very unhealthy vegetarians coming into my office with a whole heap of diseases. Yeah. Because though they have switched over and they're not consuming animal products anymore, they're still consuming a whole heap of, um, you know, too much nuts or they're doing too much fruits. There's no balance, but it has to be balanced on the platform of fruits, the vegetables, the seeds, the nuts, the grains, the ground provision, the peas and beans, legumes, you understand? And of course, lots of water throughout the day. So that's the foundation. So my reference books that I get my teachings from. So for example, when I say to you, no vinegar and i say to you um no baking soda no baking flour i got it from this book called councils on diet and foods because in this book um sister ellen g white told us that god instructed her to inform his people where not to put these things in our stomach they make the stomach become too alkaline but remember your stomach is supposed to be acidic to break down protein right and so you may go on YouTube and you see this thing about vinegar is good for weight loss and baking soda neutralizes stomach. Your stomach is supposed to be acidic. <laughs> it needs to be acidic. Your blood is supposed to be neutral, right? And your kidneys balance that quite nicely. But your stomach needs acidity. So I, got, I get those um, guidelines from this book. And then now I have this one called Healthful Living. Also give me lots of health tips in terms of how Jesus instructs us to be in good health. And the last one is called Councils on Health. So these are my four go-to books that I use. Now, once I have the base, which is my Bible, right? Then I have the books from Sister White. Then now I will go online and I'll research. Now, if I come across a recipe and the recipe has something in it that is not recommended by God from through these books, I will change the recipe. So for example, if, I, if a recipe has in vinegar, I take out the vinegar and I use lemon juice. The recipe asks for baking soda, baking flour. I just leave it out. I don't need to use it. The recipe asks for soy sauce. I don't need soy sauce when I have all of these herbs, right? I just create my own little sauce um, using, you know, tomatoes, um, onion, garlic, scallion. We can use coconut milk. We can use, um, water along with just our herbs and um, put in some you know and not to get coloring use some honey use some um, molasses I would just create a little sauce but as you go along you will learn right just follow Dr. Debs follow the videos now the next comment or questions these videos are originally and always made for my clients and my patients that's the reason I'm making these videos you know these videos are not because I'm looking for subscribers on YouTube and I'm trying to build numbers. That is not my intention. My intention in the beginning was to try and make videos that would show my clients what I'm teaching them in office. So normally they would get a lot of typed material explaining all of this. But then if you guys remember a month ago, my nieces came down here and showed me how to do the videos. And I find now that when I record it and, sh and do the demos, it helps my patients and my clients. Now, what's the difference between a patient and a client? Now, a client is somebody who comes to my office for a consultation. It's a one hour consultation. They may come to my office here in Ocherius, Jamaica, right? And for one hour, I do an assessment. So there's a form that they fill out. They send me them, they bring in their medical reports, right? I remember I'm a medical doctor. I'm a naturopathic doctor. And I'm a medical missionary. So I can't do um, di diagnostics for tests. 
So you come to me with your test. I know how to read all the tests. I know how to analyze and assess all of those tests. So you come to me, I do the assessment. Now, some persons will come in office, some persons can't. They'll do what we call distance consultation, which is WhatsApp, Zoom, um, Skype, right? Any platform, um, we just talk to each other. They fill out the form, they send it in. If they're in the States or Canada or Africa or Australia, I have clients all over the world. And then now I will go through and I'll talk to them, right? So I'll ask particular questions that pull out of you what I need to know to assess what you're doing, why you have cancer, why you have diabetes, why you have hypertension, why you have, um, you know, um, angina, why you're having um, heart palpitations, why you're having migraines, why you're having gout, why you're having poor circulation problem, why you have obesity, <laughs> other assessment. No, so that's a, that's a client. It's just a one hour assessment and I give them my response. Now a patient is somebody now who has done the consultation and they want to go further with us. So they want to do a 30 or a 60 or a 90 day program. So there's a full program that involves detoxification. It involves um, nutrition planning. It involves call, um, recipes. It covers uh, PowerPoint presentations and articles on their diseases and it involves Dr. Debs and her staff working with you. So you can register with us for a 30 day, a 60 day or a 90 day program depending on what's wrong with you. And we coach you through Back to Health on the New Start platform. Nutrition, whole food, plant-based diet. Exercise, water, sunlight, temperance, air, rest, trust in God, New Start, plus having an attitude of gratitude, a spirit of benevolence and cleanliness. So those are the questions I wanted to and comments I wanted to respond to this morning because I've been seeing them coming up, people asking, commenting. So those are the answers. Now, I came home last night. Today is December 3rd. So I came home last night and I made a quick and easy uh, lentil burger. And this morning, I want to show you how easy it is to make a lentil burger, right? Taking something that we did from um, Sunday, which was the pumpkin cashew cheese spread, right? Again, we use the word cheese because you understand cheese, right? So we're making a cheese substitute. And I have a little leftover, so I said, I want to try something new. Now, the whole idea in a whole food kitchen is creativity. Don't get chained down to recipes. I'm not chained down to nothing <laughs> except Jesus, right? I come in my kitchen, I say a recipe, it might ask for 10 things, I only have five things, I just trade out, right? Take your hand, turn your hand. In Jamaica, we said, turn your hand and make fashion. So I came and I said, okay, I don't have everything I would normally use to make a, a lentil burger. What I have and what I have, I use. So let me show you. Now, the first thing you do, you want to cook some lentils, right? So this is a, this is two cups of um, cooked lentils. So I'm going to do one cup for the demo this morning. Now, we have the red lentils, we have the green lentils, and we have the brown lentils. So this is the brown lentils, right? It's a nice light brown color. Now, this cooks up very, very fast. So I love to cook lentils because I cook in like 20 minutes, about, about 12 minutes, right? I will boil it for about 12 minutes. I don't like when my lentils are too soft. I don't like when they're soggy. They must be cooked and but firm. So about 12, 15 minutes I'll boil it, right? And then throw the water. And then I'll add my seasoning. And in less than 25 minutes, dinner is on the stove. And Dr. Debs is busy, so I don't have no two hours in no kitchen with for nothing at all. Alright now. So we're gonna take one cup, so half of this, right? In our mixing bowl. I'm going to show you how to make one and then I'll do the rest later on. So that's about one cup of the cooked lentils. Now, once we put the lentils in, now I would not, I normally add onion, scallion, garlic, thyme. Okay? You know, one small onion, maybe uh, two or three stalks of scallion, one tablespoon of the thyme leaf, it's to pull the leaves off the stalk, right? I don't have the scallion this morning. I don't have the garlic. So all I have is the onion. Whatever you have to use because you can't spoil it. So you dice up the onion very fine and the scallion very fine, right? If you have the garlic, you crush the garlic very fine and you add it to your bowl. Now, once we put that in, 
we're going to add two tablespoons of the flax meal now this is our egg replacement to bind the burger together and keep it from falling apart right so we take one tablespoon two tablespoons of the flax meal now you want to ensure that the the peas the lentils are warm so i literally just cook them so they're still warm and it will also help to pull the flax together and i have a cup of hot water here i'm going to add a little to it now once i've added my two tablespoons of flax meal to this i'm going to now add two tablespoons of the grounded uh oats flour we make our oats flour we've already discussed that right simply get the dry oats you dry roast it in your oven for about an hour right at 200 degrees fahrenheit remember all grains all nuts all um seeds they have some phytic acid so we can soak them to try and get that down right soaking is a good method or we cook uh, for a couple of hours to get rid of it so once we have dry roasted our oats i have my glass jar right here right i grind it up and i always have this full because i'm always baking something and it's ready for use so we take one tablespoon Two tablespoons of our oats flour and that goes into our baking dish now here's the thing I'm gonna add our salt next so for the salt you want a half teaspoon right it's about half teaspoon now when you become experts in the kitchen you can guesstimate everything yeah um, good so the salt is in now if you have a herb garden wonderful that's excellent now I am praying and working towards having a herb garden but where I am in St. Mary is a working so the, all of this this kitchen this where I'm staying is a working home this is not my home this is where I work from to do God's work across the world he placed me here and I work from here so I don't have the facility to have my herb gardens and stuff but you do right so have a herb garden so what I do in the interim while I'm here working, I simply buy the dried herbs. So for example, I have grounded cumin, C-U-M-I-N, right? You put a little bit in there, right? Let's say a quarter teaspoon, right? So this is cumin. Now if you have the nice fresh cumin, drop it in there. Oregano, oregano, right? Excellent herb. Again, just put a little bit in there, right? These are the powdered herbs. And herbs are very high in minerals we have powdered sage right excellent with minerals remember these are coming from the ground and they're just dried in, they're just dried and powdered out they're not um nothing is added to them it's just dried powdered herbs then I have my dried basil okay so I put some basil in there just a little bit Okay, and now, I, this is onion powder, but I'm not gonna add the onion powder because I have an onion in there, right? So I'll skip that. I have anato, right? Remember the anato seeds? Oh, that's the last of it, so that's finished. But anyway, you have to use, I put some anato in there. And then now, I don't have any garlic, so I'm gonna use garlic powder, right? Put some garlic powder in there. And then I have the paprika. The paprika is dried bell pepper. So I'll put some paprika in there. I love the taste of the smoked paprika in my um, burgers and my stews and my soups. Now, once we put all of that in, you just simply get your spoon, right? And you just mix it together. And while you're mixing, you're crushing the lentils. And it crushes very easily. It's a very soft, easy um, peel to work with. So you just crush the lentils, right? I remember it was just cooked, so it's still warm. So it, it starts pulling the whole thing together very quickly. Nice and warm and it's still moist. That's the best time to use it if you want to make your burgers with the, the lentils. If not, and it's not warm, you just simply get some hot water, right? I just add a tablespoon or two in there until you crush it out and get a lovely batter that can form a burger 
No, you can choose with this. You could make some veggie balls. But I want to show you how I make my lentil burgers stuffed with the cashew and the pumpkin spread that we made a couple of days ago. Now I took the cashew and pumpkin spread to work and let me tell you something, it was a winner. I gave it to some of my neighbors. Um, oh, the feedback was awesome. You know, Dr. Dev is so loved by her neighbors. <laughs> You know, food is truly a wonderful thing to make friends. Oh my gosh, I'm loved by my neighbors. Yes, man, I feed them. Yes, I feed them. I feed them with the word of God and I feed them with the temporal food. Jesus fed the multitude. They didn't say, come follow me. All right, follow Jesus in your camera. Okay, guys, so now, once I have mixed it together, now your hands are going to get involved in this, right? In fact, I don't need any water. So I don't even need to add any water to it because it's moist enough because I just took it out of the stove and the lentils still having some liquid in it. Good. So all I do now, once I have that, so this is how it comes out once we have pressed it all together, right? Now all you're going to do, first of all, you're going to put a little bit of the, the oats flour on your hand so it doesn't stick to the hand. All right, so coat your hand because you're using your hand to make it. Coat your hand with a little of the the oats flour and you just take up a tablespoon of the mixture right and you're going to press it down together in your hand middle press it down it won't stick because your hand has been coated so you press it down flat now once you've done that right once you press it down you take now your cheese or well the cheese substitute spread your, your cashew pumpkin spread and you put some in the middle then you bring it together like that as if you're making a ball right then you try to get it in the middle so you bring it together like that and then you cover it take some more now put it on top and you close it up just close it up right just close it up and once you close it up like that now that's one that's gonna go in the oven at two at about 300 and 25 degrees Fahrenheit and you're gonna just bake this for about uh, 25 to 30 minutes so that's one right so what you have now is that you have the the cashew and the um, pumpkin cheese spread in the middle when this bakes up oh and you bite into it it is just absolutely delicious let me make one more and show you again so now remember you coat your hand first with the oats flour right okay and then you just take a spoon and you flatten out right flatten it out in your hand middle and then you take the cashew pumpkin spread put it in there you bring this up bring the sides up yeah right, right so you have to use your fingers and work it all right bring the sides up and then you're going to cover that now with some more so you just get some more and you cover it all right gently cover it so you're sealing in the spread so when it bakes you'll be biting into that deliciousness and there you go right so you'll make all of these until you have finished the entire thing right this is what they're gonna look like so you complete the entire thing until you finish the the mixture all right, so let me rest this over here and let me wash my hands. All right, now remember I told you I made that for dinner last night. So I kind of saved some to take to work for my staff this morning. So you know I love to share. I love to share. Yes, so must treat your stuff right. <laughs> All right, so now let me show you the finished product. So let's plate up one of them. All right, so let's move this over here and let's move this over here. All right, guys, ta da! No for the finished product. All right, so we're gonna take out one. All right, so that's all finished lentil burger 
it has been stuffed with the pumpkin cashew spread. All right, now we need a sauce to go with that. So we need a quick and easy sauce. So you come home, you make a lentil burger and you want a lovely sauce to go with it. So Dr. Debs opened her fridge. I found tomatoes, onion, I had skeleton last night, skeleton time. So I got one small onion, about two tomatoes, some skeleton thyme, a little water in the blender, right? I added to that a little salt, blend it together, and I found ch chunky. I didn't want it too fine. I wanted like a chunky sauce. Ch you know, so I chop, chop, chop in the blender. Now, once I placed that in the blender, I added the juice of one small lemon, and I added two tablespoons of honey. And then I added my dried herbs. And for a thickening agent, I use the arrow root uh, powder. And in five to about five to about 10 minutes, I have a sauce. So this is my chunky tomato, my sweet and sour tomato sauce. So we simply now take that and we nice and generously cover our burger okay now once you've done that this is your finished product when you break it okay so look now when you break it you'll see the sauce in there oh i'm not gonna eat this on the camera right now but i'm telling you guys this is absolutely delicious it's a very healthy and delicious meat substitute so we don't need no flesh. Now, one last question I was asked, the cost. You know, it is in your mind, you know. <laughs> it's a mental thing. Doing this is way cheaper than eating with over um, pork and chicken and lobster and fish and shrimp and all them something they don't used to eat. Clogging up the body too much, too much animal protein causing all these diseases. This is not an expensive burger by any means, right? And you will find out, and. You're not packing up your freezer with the same thing, you know, and adding to this. You're trading out. You're getting rid of all of those stuff and you're replacing it with these stuff. So you'll find that your expenditure <clears throat> in the whole food kitchen actually goes down. It does not go up. That was the last comment I wanted to add. Now, you could have this lovely um, lentil burger with rice. <clears throat> you could have it with some sweet potato, Irish potato. You could do the quinoa. You can do some steamed bulgur with this. If you had whole grain pasta, right? Whole grain pasta that you buy at the health food store, you could have it with it. Um, you could do some string bean with some tomatoes, cucumber, uh, some eggplant. Enjoy yourself. Enjoy yourself like that, right? And be in good health and prosper even as your soul shall prosper. Now, we have done that. We have discussed our books, right? We have done a lovely um, meat substitute. We've discussed that. I've answered some of the questions and comments I'm seeing coming in from you guys. And no further word for the word. So this morning, I want to share with you from Psalm 146. The heading says, from my study Bible, the heading says, trust in God alone. Praise he the Lord. Praise the Lord, O my soul. While I live, will I praise the Lord. I will sing praises unto my God while I have any being. Put not your trust in princes, nor in the sons of man, in whom there is no help. His breath goeth forth, he returneth to his earth. In that very day his thoughts perish. Happy is he that hath the, the God of Jacob for his help, whose help is in the Lord, his God, which made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that therein is, which keepeth truth forever, which executed judgment for the oppressed, which gave food to the hungry. Yes, the Lord Looseth the prisoners. The Lord openeth the eyes of the blind. 
The Lord raiseth them that are bowed down. The Lord loveth the righteous. The Lord preserveth the strangers. He relieveth the fatherless and widow. But the way of the wicked he turneth upside down. Tim and Lass, the Lord shall reign forever. Even thy God, O Zion, unto all generations. Praise he the Lord. Now the comment, the commentary in that section is titled Where to Place Our Trust. That's the heading. Where to place our trust. Right? Now the, she's quoting her book called Petra um, Prophets and Kings by Helen G. White, page 202. She says, We are not to trust in princes or to set men in the place of God. We are to remember that human beings are fallible and they're erring, right? We are prone to errors. We're human beings, fallen men and women. And that he who has all power is our strong tower of defense. Praise the Lord. In every emergency, we are to feel that the battle is his. In every emergency, we must feel and know the battle belongs to God. We're his children, we're babies. Our Father will take care of us. Just pray. She says, his resources are limitless and apparent impossibilities will make the victory all the greater. So when we come across what seem to us as great impossibilities, as obstacles that we cannot overcome, give it to the Lord. He is more than able. He says, you know, the kettle and a thousand hills are mine, the silver, the gold, everything is mine. But we are here as his children. We have we are being trained in the school of Jesus. We are being trained not to be relying on men. Not president, prime minister, queen, or king, not councils of government, but our reliance must be on God because we are no longer of this world. The devil will come and he will present his things, but the man is a scammer. The devil is a scammer. He doesn't own anything down here. And he has a short time, Revelation 12, and he knows it. But the war unto the inhabitants of the earth. The enemy has come down here with great wrath. Remember the war started in heaven. Read the book of Revelation, right? Read the book of Genesis. He can't read Job. Oh, he's walking up and down to and fro on the earth. Mm, yes, but your time is almost up, Satan. Jesus Christ has given the victory back to his children. But Jesus' children must know these things. And how do we know these things? By hearing the word of God. We build our faith and trust in God. Have a personal one-on-one -on -one relationship with Jesus. So, I want to encourage all of us this morning. Stay in the word. It's early Thursday morning. I am up early. I go to my bed early. You guys know that. Early to bed, early to rise. I wake up, I pray. Go on my knees and I pray. Ask for the Holy Spirit. Supplicate. Put my knees to God. And once I've done, I get up off my knees fully assured. That is why Dr. Dez is so happy. I don't need the things of this world to make me happy. I don't even need people. People can't make me happy. Right? Every one of us must get our joy and happiness from God. And then we come together and share it. But we can't rely on people to make you happy. Because they can make you happy. They can make you unhappy. <laughs> Don't give nobody that power over your life. It's not worth it. Jesus Christ, God the Father, Holy Spirit, the angels, 